it's been 15 years since I've been in trouble and I'm actually charged with the same exact charges that I had 15 years ago. I can't believe, you know, at 40 years old, here it is, I'm going back to jail again. When you're locked up, every CEO expects to see you back. The judge tells you, I better not see you back in my courtroom, knowing that statistically you're coming back. Everything that I do, everything that I am, is because of the childhood that I had. My dad would come and go whenever he felt like it. I mean, he might be there today, he might not be back for a month. And now I'm gonna see a geometry. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm trying to bring it up, though. How are you gonna make it a B? I guess I missed it when I was out. That's why you gotta go to school even when you're sick. Yeah, I know. You gotta make sure you keep up on your medicine, bud. Okay. Don't tell your mother at last minute, okay? Because then you won't have any, and then you'll be acting like a maniac. All right. The most important thing that I teach to my children is that family is everything. There's nothing more important. Nobody can ever take your family away from you. I met Jason back in 1994. I was 16. I think that he is a phenomenal dad. Right now, the kids are on point. They're on top of their schoolwork. They're getting to school, back and forth to school every day. My biggest fear is I'm falling behind. I sit my kids down, probably at least one or two of them, every day and have some sort of conversation about personal responsibility. Nobody ever helped me think about what I was going to do in my future. And because of that, I lived in the moment. I want them to live in the moment, but planning for tomorrow, planning for the future. And I would die if I called home one day and one of them had the same troubles that I'm having because I'm not here. to prison, the first and very obvious result is that they're not there. Almost anything that a parent does makes it more likely that the child will do that. I've had several father and son 
cellmates, and they serve time together. Approximately 50% of people who come out of prison go back into prison. And I think that you'd have to be blind to not recognize that our system, in so many different ways, I don't know that I like to use the word broken, but it's certainly been. Right now, uh, my family and I are driving to uh, the federal courthouse in Maryland for a sentencing date. I really hope that everything that I've done in my life leading up to this will give the judge a clear picture of who I really am, not who they're going to make me out to be. I try to get jobs at like Home Depot and other places, and you know, people want to pay me eight, nine dollars an hour. I can't take care of a family on nine dollars an hour. One day I just decided I gotta do something. I'm not gonna let my kids be homeless. When times get tough for people, people make tough choices. I take my kids to school every day. So that morning I drop them off at school, but nobody ever comes back to get them. They took both of our vehicles. They destroyed our house. Now they have to come home to a home that's destroyed and be told that their father's in jail and they have no idea when he's coming home. So they were had to clean up my mess. but it's like we're relieved about how long he has because he's not going to be gone as long as we thought he would. I graduate um, this upcoming March, and he won't be able to make it, but hopefully everybody else comes and supports me. And I know he's going to be proud of me. You know, my sister Gishelle graduating is like my dad not being able to be there for her to see it is it it means a lot to us to see how proud our dad is of us. <laughs> Cause he's he's so amazing. And, and we're all family. And nothing can tear us apart at this point. And that's what I don't want him to go because he brought us together for a reason. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with him. I'm not capable of supporting five children when he goes away. It worries me a lot. But I'm hoping, because of this experience that they're going through now with their father, and they see the outcome of it, that they'll make better choices. Yo, come on, let's go. Time to get up, let's go. Devin, shake him. It was never about fame and glory to me. TV, movies, make this life seem glamorous. There's nothing glamorous about watching over your shoulder all the time, worried about being arrested all the time. If you did it wrong, there's only one outcome in the end. Nobody rides off into the sunset with a bag of money. It just doesn't happen.
make sure that the water stays on those. See how great things are there? Yeah. The water has to stay there. I was released in February of 2015. I've always pretty much been self-employed, so I've been lucky enough that I have people that believe in me and give me opportunities, because I know that if I have to write a resume and go for a job interview, I'm not getting it. I, I like working, so idle time in jail is not for me but I really can never truly be happy until I knew my kids are okay. I could just tell everything was so different. Within a short period of time, people were getting kicked out of school and, and their grades were just dropping. It just got progressively worse. Fuck yeah, bro. About everybody's a drug dealer. Almost everybody is, yeah. It's whether it's, it's just selling a, a dime bag in the park, it doesn't matter. Everybody's trying to make some type of money. I really don't see myself going to college and getting a career where, you know what I'm saying, I'm fucking making 15, 20 dollars an hour. I really don't. It, it doesn't seem as if it's realistic for a dude like me who lives in Dunlop. Like, you see the stuff that we do on a daily basis, and it's nothing like, the, like something somebody successful would do. My dad wasn't there. I kind of met all these people, and they kind of made me feel wanted. It might have been bad shit that we were getting into, but we did it together. That was all that mattered. We're just a big family trying to make it out together. I'm scared for my kids' future because the road that they're on right now is going to put them dead or in prison. I would love to be close for my siblings. I just feel as if the paths they've chosen and the decisions they've made aren't beneficial. And though I love them, I feel as if being around them more is gonna put us all in a bad place instead of some of us actually being successful. I dropped out of school. I had a bad attitude. I, um, I didn't really wanna be there. I didn't wanna be around people. I was just really negative, and um, I wasn't thinking about better in my future. I was just thinking about me being mad at the time. I don't have any long-term goals, because I'm like trying to deal with it right now, pretty much. 
Well, everybody except for Jason failed last year. And I got kicked out of school or dropped out. So, I mean, honestly, nothing came positive of us making our own decisions and doing what we wanted. I tell you, when they say you reap what you sow, that's, that's my life right now. I don't know whose lives I've hurt by selling them drugs, but now I'm on the other side watching my family go through what maybe they see their family went through. I don't wish that upon anybody. Worrying about your kids, you just, it takes all the joy out of everything else. You know, people say, you gotta let them learn the hard way. The hard way is prison or death. How's that an option? How do you, how do you let your kid learn the hard way? And I can't imagine losing any of my kids to these streets. I hope there's enough time left to fix it. I can tell you, I'll never give up. I'll never accept my kids being anything but great. And I tell them all the time, you don't measure success with money. You measure success with happiness. Are you happy doing what you're doing? If you can take care of your family and you're proud of what you do, then you're successful.